Welcome to Three on the Ones and Twos with your hosts, Tom, Cassie, and James. Just three old friends talking about their favorite records. Think of it as the coolest book club for music nerds. Good evening, you beautiful cucumbers. How you guys <laughs> doing tonight? Do well. Yeah. Man, I love uh, all the new um, areas and territories we're going with the show. Um, because uh, the whole idea is for it to be organic and do things that we love, which is uh, music and people, and marry those two things. Um, tonight we're at the Earl. Thank you guys. Thank you very much for the, for the third Earl. time. Yes. Third, 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 third. Well, third different se- series. Yes. This is yeah. series yes. three at the Earl. Uh, shout out to um, my our brother Matthew Darrow behind the scenes, and um, three great bands: Chrome Castle, Compartmentalizationalists. Perfect. And blood circuits, and um, this is really cool. So this guest, uh, I love this, uh, and, and um, it, it works out really, really cool because he um, plays drums with Butzer, our brother, and he also plays drums with Jesse Smith. So two guys who've been on the show. So you, it's there's like alumni here. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. But I first saw his band with Jeffrey Butzer, I believe, in 2010, and I remember seeing. These guys remind me of a young cure. And then backstage, we got into an argument. Oh, what? OMD. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but it was wonderful, and I loved it. And uh, I remember me, my, my sing, your singer and myself even hit it off, and we were chatting about process and songwriting, a new wave, and I clearly was 30 years his senior. You know? Sure, uh, yeah. And he still is such a great uh, songwriter, and he's got such style and wonderful. And congratulations. You guys just put out a n- new record a while back. But right, you, right. You've had such still a busy... Yeah, it's yeah. still very, very yeah, new. Yeah. And you've had such a busy year, and I love that. Um, you know, working with Butes on his show, talking about movies, talking about music on Three and the Ones and Twos, sure. playing drums with um, local legends uh, who are dear friends of ours. Sure. Man, what am I doing? This show isn't about me. This is Cassie. This is James. My name is Tom, and our special guest is Sean Zirfoss. Woo! <laughs> so, Round of applause. Yay! So, man, so yeah, what is this record that you want to talk about? So, I uh, wanted to talk about the Stone Roses debut album what? from 1989. Self titled. Uh, Self titled record from huge, 1989. Huge record. Quite possibly one of the, uh, widely considered one of the best albums uh, ever. It tops a lot of lists, or like in the top 20, 50. It does, it's kind of know. crazy about the number of lists and right. critics, uh, readers, like all kinds of different things. Sure. Uh, six years later, however, followed by what is quite possibly the greatest sophomore slump of all time. Yes, yeah. <laughs> so, and, yeah, it's, it's amazing that, the, the, that uh, they had those bookends. I know they had some really successful reunion tours right before the pandemic. A friend of mine saw him at MSG uh, in New York, and he was like, you know, his teenage dreams came true. He's watching, you know, Ian dance on stage and just, you know, like, uh, just losing his mind, you know. But that record is, I mean, I I know for me, I had the single of uh, I Want to Be Adored. We talked about this in the green room, which is this, before the show, and Mm -hmm. like, I Want to Be Adored to me sounded like the Stooges on acid, and I love the Stooges, and I love acid. (laughs) Yeah. Right, right. Well, it's uh, it's cool to me because the intro, you know, that song intros the album, and the fade, because I actually just timed it uh, when I was uh, about to come here, uh, it's a minute. It fades up for an oh, entire right. minute, right. Right. and he doesn't start singing until like a minute in, uh, right. and so it's kind of like, I mean, the record starts like you're sort of almost creeping up on it. Like you're walking up to a band that is sort of like playing and you like stumble upon it. I have something weird to say about that because I, okay, so I'm, I'm, I'm obviously familiar with Stone Roses. I'm familiar with a lot of songs on this, but I never, I've never listened. I've never owned it. I've never listened to it, you know, just from knowingly from start to finish. So when I got the vinyl and I had it, I was playing it and I put it on. I'm like, and you could hear a little bit of sound, but it's like, I, 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 I called Greg. And I was like, "Did you did you do something to the to the turntable, the right, stereo system?" Right. I'm like, "Is it on like the wrong setting, the it's wrong speed?" It's not kicking in. It makes it, you feel it, uncomfortable. Cause, cause right, it, cause right. It goes You're for anxious. So right. long, right. like yeah. it, it's really, really, really slow. Which, right. Which is so wild because um, he is known for having this unreal stage presence. They call it like the monkey dance that he does. Right. And uh, 
I could almost picture him like walking on stage like that, like this, you know. Right, it's right. Just like, wait, here it comes, and then right. boom. It's it's again. It's that almost that uh, you're under this hypnosis slash, uh, you know, euphoric, you know, sound. Right. You know. I'm sure all the like, whatever the record label, whatever and they heard it, and they're like. Can we do something about the the sing? We have to do a single edit. Like I yeah. can't do this at the beginning, like for a right. minute on the radio before right. it really kicks in or whatever. So right. I got to think about it. Like next time I hear it played right. somewhere, like does it do that? Like right. That, yeah. that now was super that long was that the I first song? That. You, was that the first song you heard off the record? Uh, no. The first song I heard off the record was Waterfall. Actually, I love it. Uh, which is like kind of fitting because it is more of a single. Like you yeah. can yeah. like it's a it's a compact. It's like memorable. It's got a memorable. That was hook. big in the UK, I you know. think. Yeah. 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 Um, it might be my favorite. It might be my favorite track. On yeah. Really uh, and then she bangs the drums, uh, I love which I that think song. is track two. So those I two were the first ones I heard. Um, but it's funny because we're talking about um, this album being so awesome, and the second one being not super great. The second one was actually the first Stone Roses album oh, I that's heard. That's interesting. Uh, really? Right, it was, okay, yeah. Because of when it came out kind of thing, and then you went back no, and I, Not really. I Like, in high school, I had a teacher who was, like, big into music, and he and I would talk after class about music, and he gave me Second Coming. And oh. he's like, hey, check this out. And I was like, oh, this is pretty cool. It kind of like, sounds like, you, see you what know. He thinks about this. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but he, he said the same. Yeah, he, was like, he was like, we're going to see if you get an A or a D. <laughs> right. He said the same thing that I said. He's like... I didn't even know they had a first album. Like, yeah. I didn't. I had no idea. Yeah. And the and thing is, is, Second Coming is a brilliant title of a second album. Except they didn't, they didn't, deli right, they didn't right. deliver. They did not deliver. Right. Us, you know? So there are a couple good, uh, so, like, Ten Story Love Song is good on mm -hmm. that, and a couple of other ones. But, yeah, similarly, that album also eases in. They don't, the first track is, like, 11 minutes. He doesn't start right, yeah. singing until, like, five minutes in. Really? So they took what they did here uh, and kind of, um, I don't know. Jump, jump the train with it. He's, he's such, a little bit. He's such like, an interesting just wasn't performer. Right. Instead of just right. using, because it's kind of like using too much spice. It's like instead of using just enough to make something taste, it's like a little bit too saturated right. with it and too okay. Right. Okay. So I'm sorry. No, 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 no. Please, uh, no, this is you. Yeah. So yeah, I feel like they kind of with this album, they they sort of caught lightning in a bottle. Like it's mm -hmm. you know they're considered like one of the founders of like the the mad Chester scene, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is kind of dancey, you know, with the, the happy Mondays, I guess. Mm -hmm. But I mean, this record has like dance elements to it, but I mean, it's, it's jangly. It's also kind of like, they have some dance Got beats, some, but some bagginess to it. Right. Yeah. I, yeah. Love, the guitar, yeah. I love the guitar player. Um, right. And he, um, he's, he's the one that does the, does the artwork, right? He does do the art. Yeah. Right. Right. And, yeah. Um, John, John Swire. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. But I wouldn't necessarily say that, um, He's a good singer, but he's a great singer for this band. Oh, I you think so. I mean? yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, like yeah. I mean, I, you know, any other thing, I don't think his delivery would work for anything else. Right. You know, but that's what I love, and that's what you're talking about, like that that lightning. You well, know, what do I'm you saying? think that the this album is better than the band? Because that's that's a great that's question. a topic that we talk about, like with sometimes we, it's certainly bigger than the band when we talk yeah. about Marky Moon. Mm -hmm. There was this thought of like, is is Marky Moon as an album better than Television? The band they like rose above what their band. I could think be. I think the problem is kind this of is with, a similar, I would with say both of them though. I mean, it, except like with from what I understand, like with you know with Television, like their second album, it's, though not sure. Marky Moon level, it was still really good. Like I, I, I mean, I think there's something tough with bands that even just put out two because were ones because you always have that they maybe didn't weren't they weren't given the opportunity to maybe to do a third or and or see whether going. or not they they learn from their mistakes you know well he's had a solo uh, 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 he's had a solo um a successful solo career certainly in um overseas and in japan i mean he does stadiums by himself right uh, by himself in japan right you know sure. um i think that first of all, I can't wait to this weekend to uh, maybe have a couple of pints and listen to Marky Moon and then this right afterwards sure. together, right? Like, right. In sure. Order, sure. You know? yeah, yeah. I, I, would, the, the I would, I would, say, yeah. I would say, I would say, for me, you mentioned this band, I mentioned this album, and I mentioned I want to be adored. Yeah, I think James is right. I think it's like that kind of thing, and then I don't mention anything else. You know, like yeah. they, 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 they the, the, the album has become bigger than the band for me. But every, every uh, fan, and every listener is different. But Sean, you, so you, 
were introduced to the second album first, and then you got exposed to this album. Right. right? So, so what, yeah, what's your origin story? Yeah, and, and what I think is interesting is that you album. said that. So you must have liked the second one, which you say was just like a kind of a big dud compared to this, which is interesting, right? You did like well, it. Well, I liked it, uh, you know, I, I and I appreciated it, and I think growing up in a household where my dad was like big into classic rock, like mm -hmm. that, I mean, mm -hmm. it's like pretty bluesy. It's mm -hmm. pretty, mm -hmm. I mean, oftentimes it's kind of overwrought. Like he's really leaning into the Hendrix thing, yeah. which he does a little bit on this album, um, yeah. John Squire does. but. On that record, uh, like more so, and so I heard that, and then I was like, "Oh, I like this. Let me like look at more." But then I found um, their compilation, which came out in '95, which called "The a... Complete Stone Roses," which is a collection of like their singles and B-sides, which the and everything. Yeah. yeah, which the label Silvertone did without their uh, approval, I guess. Oh. But it was still really good, oh. <laughs> and so I was Wait, like, "This was the third George record." Uh, 95. That's amazing. Was this yeah. while they were, this, this wasn't, no, this was after they broke from Silverstone because they had a big falling out. Right, sure, you, sure. Oh, they, right. they went and destroyed their offices, everything. Oh, really? Sure. Yeah, like, oh, wow. Yeah. I didn't know but that. British, I mean, for a British band, there's, it's su such a singles oriented culture. We talked right, about right. that as well. Like, almost like a singles collection is a great time. We talked about the, the jam extras. Mm -hmm. You know, we talked about singles going steady. We talked outs. about this right. when we had Jesse uh, Smith on. And yeah. uh, two, both Irish bands actually, um, um, Dexy's Midnight Runners and Thin Lizzy. When you hear the greatest hits, like I remember as a boy, I didn't. Now Thin Lizzy's one of my favorite bands, but I, you hear the boys back in town. I'm like, man, whatever. And then you hear the greatest hits, and then the boys back in town play, and you're like, you hear completely different. Right. Same with Come and Eileen with Dexy's, and. I can't wait to now. Yeah, I got such a busy weekend plan. I can't right. wait the to Stone listen to the complete, yeah. uh, complete Stone Roses session. One right, thing right. Interesting. Okay, so um, Peter Hook and the Light just played mm -hmm. on Tuesday, and so Peter Hook, Rough Trade Records, before they put this out, before they signed, Rough Trade Records um, paid to have um, Elephant Stone, which, which a lot on some international, I guess, releases, Elephant Stone is on here. Sure. And yeah. Peter Hook produced it, and they wanted Peter Hook to produce. Even after you know he signed to Silverstone, they wanted Peter Hook to produce this, but he was already off. You know, he was he was already obligated to go off with New Order. They were doing technique, they were recording right. technique, so sure. he wasn't able to. But I think that that's um, you know as far as the the singles. And then the other thing about like Fool's Gold isn't on this on 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 my copy and on the actual whatever. Sure, it's it's it's, a, it's another single, and I think right. that's like their biggest hit ever. Sure, yeah. So it's Another like ten minutes on. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I, I love bands that do that though. So they, here's the question like, though. It's your level tear us apart. Yeah, yeah. without it's a doubt. Like, right. Yeah. yeah. So, so here's the question, like uh, to uh, to add on to what James was asking, did something happen that you were like, holy cow? Like this so is your you're third clear, album, now, you now know, you're a musician <laughs> and you're an artist and you're right. past your adolescent years. And you're like discovering this stuff, you know, and it's like, like, I, I, I always think I go, man, some young kid's going to discover the Pogues and the Clash. And I would love to see the happiness on their face because I know when I discovered those bands, it blew me away, you know, right. Like, did something happen? And you were like, wow, like, you know, like, with this I record that you were interested with the first one, uh, that the first one, no, the second one that was given to you, the sure. first one you were introduced to something. Right. Inspired. Well, it was enough. Like the second one was like interesting enough. I was like, oh man, these songs are are long. Like they're kind of interesting. They have again. The second one had a couple pop songs on it, and I was like, oh, I'd like to like hear a little bit more. Like this sounds different. And then I I heard this album, and again, like you usually do when you're easing into a band, you hear the singles first. So I heard Waterfall. Which is I heard beautiful. She Bangs the Drums, and I was like, I need to like those are catchy songs. I need to kind of like dig into this album, mm -hmm. and I did. And I think. What I found in the record was a, a bit of a challenging listen. Like yeah, it's I not. Love that. I mean, there are catchy songs, but I mean, it's also a little weird. Like the right after Waterfall, they have Waterfall in reverse, yeah. and like yeah. um, again, they end the album on what is like a ten-minute kind jam of out. like funk yeah. jam, you know, which is yeah, Fool's Gold. It's really and strange. There's yeah. your so, Manchester. I mean, right, right, right. Yeah. Wait, wait, which, which is cool, because like, because it ends with, I am the resurrection, but it is a jam. Oh, right, like yes. A, no, I yeah. am the resurrection is yeah. the one, yeah. 
that I was. But it's just right. like yeah, I just feel like it's. Just this like, is the hacienda, whatever. Yeah. Right. Yeah. This right. is for the. Yeah. For, but do you love? Yeah. I love a challenge. Heads. I love a challenge. Oh, I do too. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, and I love us. Uh, sometimes, you know, we have all had we've like well, that's why we love what we do. You know, uh, music changes and saves you, rearranges you, and stuff. But like. I love for I love a record that I love it immediately, and I love a record that I'm like, man, I need to digest this thing four or five times. Sure, you know what I mean. You can really sink your teeth into it yeah. for sure. It's I mean, it's such an iconic record. I mean, you whenever you see that cover, you're just right. Like, right. It's beautiful. Yeah, right. it, it may as well be. I mean, with the big iconic records of yeah. And I think just like how history. how how con and, and I say controversial because it really kind of was because while it was topping, I mean, so so many different polls and charts and like you know just mm -hmm. I mean people I mean there were a lot of people that were putting it on like like best British album best yeah. British sure. album Without and then there are other ones that, that, that then there was like this like controversy because there are people that are just like they do not deserve that to have like the best British right. album right right and it was like because it is so the it, English, it's very the like, English and the English fans are very weird. I mean, we, we, we all heard about like, are you Blur or Oasis? Like, I can't like both. You know, right, are you right, Sex right, Pistols right. or Clash? I can't like both. I mean, right, you know, right, right. I love like, that it's so. I love music. That it's you know. so. That it can can be so. It, it's such a good listen though too, but that it can be so polarizing. Like, you right. Know? Well, I, you know, to the point of like finding it kind of weird, like sometimes when you have to work a little bit harder for something, you develop more of a relationship with it. Mm -hmm. And yeah. like it challenges is, you yeah, it challenges you a little bit. And um, like the, again, the, the songs are like, they're kind of weird. Like I, I don't know the actual quote uh, from Kurt Cobain regarding uh, when he was talking about the raincoats. He's like, I feel like I am like, eavesdropping into oh, some into another yeah. world that I'm like not yeah. supposed to hear. And I yeah. kind of feel that way yeah. with this and they're not as left field by far as like the raincoats, but it is slightly left field and sure. like you kind of feel like you're um, hearing something that like nobody else is hearing. Like it's right. something different. Like it's tangible. Like there's jangle, there's the birds in there. There's yeah. like psychedelic there's yeah. like British psychedelic but it is um, yeah. its own its own thing. So yeah, and you're talking about Manchester, uh, you know, um, you know, what? Inspire Car Carpets. I mean, there's so many uh, great bands that came out from that scene. But I think they probably are the biggest, uh, the most iconic of right. those bands. Right. You know. Yeah, I, I I I don't have as much of a context, and this is all very exotic to me coming from yeah. the southeast, right? Mm -hmm. Like. Manchester may as well be a different planet, of course. So yeah. th there's a certain allure to that. But I had to, you know, ask my friend uh, Ben Coleman, who grew up in, you know, London, and I'm like, what's your relationship to Stone Roses as a yeah. like local band, you know, like or whatever, a domestic from, band? From, from yours, from your country. Yes. Us? And he was like, you know, I, I've, I've just heard it a million times everywhere, playing right. out of everything, playing everywhere, on the radio, everything, and then. Um, he said that what really set them apart from all the other bands around the indie bands at that time was that they had a great rhythm section. Yeah. So that was like, you know, that was sort of the Stone Roses, like their edge or whatever so at that time. Yeah, yeah, that's right. a good point. Uh, yeah, it probably was on yeah. like major pop radio. I mean, Ben, ben probably was, well, he, I'm, we're similar ages, he was a kid, so he probably heard it like, you know, like people almost hear, you know, uh, what do you call it? Uh, the kid, the kids, the kids band, boy bands, or something. Like, they might have been a radio like that. You would have been like ten years old. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. but but he, it would have been ubiquitous. It would have been everywhere. Yeah. Right, right. Well, the the cool thing about this album is that on repeat listens, like it always reveals something new. Yeah. And um, to the point about musicians, like you don't really realize initially when you're listening to it, how good the players are. Like, John Squire gets a lot of credit as an excellent guitarist, and he really is. He's amazing, yeah. But the bassist and the drummer, Manny and, and Rennie, um, are like a phenomenal rhythm section. Like, the drums are really intricate, and right. um, it's got like a lot of like really kind of like syncopated parts, and like, you know, you don't realize it until you like listen closer, because he's still serving the song, and it's still super interesting, but... Um, you know, so he's kind of doing both those things. He's foundational, but like, right. it's in many ways kind of like a lead instrument. You mentioned that and, Ben said that he goes out of all those bands, they had the best rhythm section. You know, just right. phenomenal. Well, I think um, one of the things, like just going back to talking about the 
like the Manchester sound and kind of like helping to create, I think they helped create the, the mad Chester sound, right? Mm -hmm. like right, kind of, right. Um, was that they were heavily influenced by like the northern soul scene that like was really big in like Manchester and stuff like like way like earlier much like a de few decades before but right. they were very interested into it like it influenced them and you can definitely hear it in all the playing and stuff so it it helps create like a very distinctive sound that you could see originating more from Manchester than maybe some other places yeah. I don't hear as much ecstasy in the Stone Roses album as I do in a Happy Mondays album. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right, that's or true. Or a Primal yeah. Scream album, mm -hmm. or a lot of those types of things. I hear the drugs, I mm -hmm. hear the ecstasy, right. for sure, big time. Yeah, and Stone I, Roses may have some, yeah, and but not as not as high quantity. And yeah. when you think about bands that, like, I mean, and I'm, I, well, I'm just a per person with you know, thoughts, so, like, I could be wrong, or everyone has opinions. I liked Happy Mondays. I never liked Primal Scream, Scream, and I know friends of mine be like, "What's wrong with you?" But and even those bands, the songs that I did like, they haven't aged well. But this aged well. It kind of does, yeah. Well, and I think you know something that this record does um, is it, it connects to like a, a very British lineage. Like it does have um, like psychedelic music. For sure. um, like the Beatles, but it does also, and the Birds are uh, American, but, you know, they influenced so much about, like, the British scene, and they picked that Birds line up. Uh, they also, on this record, have um, Elizabeth, My Dear, which is, like, a reworking, I think, of Scarborough Fair, so they're, oh, like, wow. reworking, oh. like, old yeah. folk yeah. songs, yeah, I was like, too. wait a minute, I know right, this. Right, right, and know, so... Sure. They're, it's, a, it's homage. Yeah. Right, yeah, yeah totally, yeah. and so they're kind of, like, playing off this, like, British history, like they're they're pretty rooted, but then mm -hmm. you know, drug all of those things like somewhere yeah, else. The, scene, um, the hacienda, right, in, right, in, yeah, in, like in, the in, whole Manchester twenty four hour party people thing. Right, Huge right, yeah. Jam. So you said that this is, I mean, when we were talking, we were messaging about what record to pick. You know, you 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 had a few, but when you came across that one, so this is like one of your top three to five favorite records of all time. Oh, easy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, easy. Cool. Yeah, yeah. And like I said, it's it's just been one that's like stuck with me. I mean, per, like my personal taste, I love jangly things. Like I, you know, psych some psychedelic I can do, um, like within reason, like if it's still tangible like this is. Um, you know, I like things that are kind of dancey, but like more so I just, I like things that are that are interesting. And we, we all kind of decide like what's interesting to us, but to me, this just sounds different. Like it's like it's tangible, but it's yeah. it's something else. It's super catchy, right? But it's not like everything else that's super catchy. But you can right. sink your teeth into. Yeah. It's also an album that can, like you're saying, you discover things about it, and and it's a mm -hmm. it's an album that can you can just love over time. It's not like you've heard after you hear it a few times, you sort of like know everything about it or, you know, it's like you, you can kind of discover things about mm -hmm. it right. over the years. So I, I love albums like that where they're, you know, they're kind of like companions in a way because of how great they are and, and how diverse it is and how much they do mm -hmm. different things. And sure. You know how, how, yeah, that, I think that's awesome. Well, and it does work we're talking about like singles versus albums this mm -hmm. i mean it has singles on it but it works as an album it is like yeah. a cohesive mm -hmm. piece like right. even down to like the album art like yeah. the whole thing oh, is yeah. like it's a package it like fits in this box and it's like television's marking movie. It, it really it's, is yeah, i mean it's wild you know as uh, you know i would have never made that comparison that's another one of my top three albums yeah, um record. And, you know, maybe it does Along come... With, uh, London Calling. Right, yeah. London Calling, yeah. too. And John, John Squire, we did, like, he does, he does all he the does art. He does the art, work. yeah. So the front and right. the... British and, beautiful. in fact, Iconic. the front piece, is like, what, like, Jackson Pollock style, yeah. you know, thrown paint. But it is, uh, it's also called um, Bye Bye Bad Man. Right, which is, which the, is the name of the song. Right. right. Which I guess is... Do you know, like, the basing of um, that? Well, like, it's based on, so the song is about the, the student riots in, in France in 1968, right. is what it is. Yeah, um, yeah. So it definitely, uh, yeah, I mean, again, it is, it's a whole, it's a whole package. Well, it, it was something like, so, like, the the, le the lemons on sure. here, which are, like, super interesting, because they're thrown in there, but they're, because something about, like, I guess during the riots, like, they would use lemon peels to, 
I don't know if they would suck on lemons to combat like the tear gas that was I being think, thrown at him or well, something. Like, yeah. It had something to do with that, which right. I think it's interesting that he did that. Yeah. Right. That yeah. Know, right. yeah. Sort of, that it was actually like, it's, 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 it's a yeah. nice piece of art in itself. It's and then beautiful. the fact that they worked it into, they named a song after it, and they based right. the song on right. it. And then you, it's just, They're artists. it is, it's nice. Yeah. Yeah. They are. It's They're like artists. Whole, yeah. Yeah. Well, and I, I think too, just like the visuals, even them uh, in front of like w like in a studio, like on the back, they have them on like an infinity wall here. Yeah. Like um, again, classic. it's just like yeah, it's classic, it's simple, mm -hmm. and it just kind of fits the music. I like it's this isolated mm -hmm. like you don't see anything else like and there's something except super for retro the... looking about it and like the black and white and the way they are. It's like you could almost see it like as being it like could be something years. from it like... could be thirty years before. Yeah. Sure, yeah. yeah. That's like a. a, a um, like a bucket list thing as a band is you have to do a band photo. Like, oh, easy. Like yeah, definitely. Ball. Right, that right. Be, yeah. Every band yeah. should have a photo. Yeah, at least one. I've never yeah. had one. It'd be right. amazing. It is kind of cool, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and even they have some, and it like... It has to be black and white, too. Sure. Yeah, for and sure. they do have some live footage of them, like, performing songs also, yeah, and I think that's where that, that shot yeah, is from. Beatles, but um, Beatles yeah. like, there's so many yeah, yeah, pretty, yeah, you know, there's just... Yeah. Uh, it, it, it I think has a very underground. Like, oh, I yeah. Like, yeah too, well, yeah. either way, it's very 60s. Yeah, it's very... It has a very, like, timeless presentation. Sure. You know, yeah. Yeah. Totally. And so, yeah. Music, you know. I definitely think, you know, as I'm as I'm thinking about this, uh, and as we're getting close to to wrapping this up, perhaps I I definitely think this resonates with me because it's a it's a cohesive package and yeah. uh, it works as an album, um, you know. But yeah, it's it's kind of challenging and it's a little weird and um, nothing else quite quite sounds like it. And I feel like I'm. Again, like Kurt Cobain says, like eavesdropping into like this other this other world. So yeah. that's such a fun yeah. thing too. Um, no matter what age you are, and we're all a few years apart, you're a bit younger. But uh, when you discover something or an artist in your life, um, and that's such a wonderful thing. And then when you hear who they liked, like I, I may have listened to the Raincoats because, like, or someone may have listened right. to Billy, um, uh, Billy Childish because Kurt Cobain said he liked right. Billy Childish, right. you know. And uh, but it was your teacher, that right? Was, right. That's, that's such a so. one, that's such a wonderful thing, you know. And I mean, like my my older brother, um, you know, I, I don't, you know, it's such a weird thing to even mention it because right? I don't really talk to him anymore. But like as a boy, like I remember him playing me like, you know, like Who's Next and and like the Tommy album, and it was just really just ginormous. Uh, uh, you know, effect on me. You know what There's I mean? There's always right. someone yeah. in your life that, yeah. that has introduced you to music, like almost like you can think of a one person right, in a way. Like right. I have, I have somebody who, it, when I was like 14, that introduced me to punk, who was a little bit yeah. older, because I don't have any brothers or sisters. So he almost was my older brother that introduced it's me. So, and, you, you give him a shout out. A, thanks, thanks everybody. That was yeah, yeah. Miles Peterkin. He was. So uh, I'll, I'll give yeah. Frank. I'll give. I'll give. I'm gonna give. Be man. I'm. You know, because I'm in a, in a very good mood. I'm going to give Frankie Cheshire, my brother, shout out for turning me on to The Who and for taking me when I was 13 years old to the movie theater to see Strange Brew. It was pretty awesome. Well, yeah, it's, uh, I don't know, that's that's what music does. Like, we, yeah. we, like, hear a song and we think where, you know, where we've been in the past when we've heard that song, perhaps the first time or just mm -hmm. one of the many times we heard the song and we just, Bring like, it back. Right, yeah, we pair these like physical experiences, um, love or heartache or just having a good time or whatever, yeah. like with with these songs. You can remember so, someone wearing a red sweater, right? That right, sure, clear, yeah, like yeah, that clear yeah. Do you remember a song? I always think about this, and I'm sorry, we are wrapping up, but the, uh, and, and this this might be part of a letter is there. I have memory of a song getting into a car accident, like wow. what song that's playing when you lose control of your car, and thinking like. This is the last song I'm going to hear. Wow. Kind of thing. No, but uh, and, I'm going to send was, this yeah. out to our like viewers. To... Yeah. I'm going to send this out to our viewers because we really are trying to get more involved with our mm -hmm. viewers. Someone please send that question in because um, that's a really good one and I can't wait for us to answer it. Right. Well, just know. like different big, big traumatic, moments in traumatic your life. Traumatic things. Traumatic, life. but also could be amazing that there was a song that you hear that, that is specific to a memory. A, a memory the song is playing when your child is born. Why don't we mm -hmm. just say... The song's well, thinking yeah. when you're, you think you might die. Why don't we just know, say that is that the question, because I really love that. Because I will say this. Man, I'm just talking about family. My cousin Linda, 
This goes, <laughs> this goes out to Linda. No, but uh, I was born uh, April 1st, April Fool's Day, uh, 1970, telling my age. You and, and, I Boone. and I remember, yeah, me and Dee Boone and Lon Chaney, uh, not bad, in decent company. Um, but um, my cousin Linda, who's, you know, a bit older than me, she, so I imagine she was maybe 18 or 17 when I was born. But she tells a story that she was she was with a friend smoking a party and listening to the Tommy album. And yes. they, they go, we're bringing on Tommy. And I came oh, home. Oh, shit. So she That's still, great. That's yeah, awesome. So she still talks. And she goes, like, she goes I'll never forget it. And, she, and my mom and dad are like, she's like, trust me, we were like this. Like, yeah. Yeah. God, that's <laughs> awesome. So yeah, um, Cassie, you tell one, and I'd love I, to hear you tell a great question. I, I, I can never think of these. You guys that's always a good like, one. Well, no. great questions. You've I, already I mentioned later. on another show, but the, the time that you talk about well, I guess it's not the, the song. Be- with like, your, mom, your mom and the Beatles? Mom and the Beatles, but also you seeing Primus on LSD. Oh, yes. Oh, no, and I didn't see him. I, I was, it was okay. a sold out show. It reminded it was like, I was outside. you. No, I was sitting outside. outside. I was listen. sitting outside. And it was at like a rec center. No, I, I, I would say Primus something like, LSD. I do remember, okay, so thinking about the Beatles, though, because like, so I loved, like, so my mom loved the Beatles, and the Beatles always, um, Okay, so my mom loved the Beatles, and it kind of got instilled in me. And then ever since I was really young, I know I really loved animals. And I remember, you know that Beatles song? I think it's just called, like, Good Morning, right? And it's, like, really, like, Good Morning. Right, right, right. Right, right, right. right. I remember watching this special. Like, it was something on, like, I don't know, some nature channel about, like, these little, you know, like, baby foxes, and they have them on, like, wildlife channels Mm -hmm. where they'll show, like, whatever, and then they sometimes have, like, catchy music going when they're, like, out, like, playing Mm -hmm. and stuff. And it's, like, I always remember that. Like, whenever I see, like, I always associate it with, I love watching these, but then, you know, the world is cruel, and cruel things happen to baby animals sometimes in these nature shows. And so I'm always thinking, I'm always like, oh, this I'm always thinking about the dichotomy time she's of like, like it's happy good morning, when so, someone's good getting morning. Yeah. And then like next scene, like one of the like little like baby foxes dies from something, and I'm just yeah. like, every time I'm watching one of those, I'm just like, Some predator comes I'm just like, right, yeah. oh wait a minute, this is gonna be a trick. Hey, this but is that's a trick. the juxtapose. Like, right. like, that's like a Smith song. It sounds so right. happy, but he's saying yeah. he wants to bludgeon <laughs> someone. You know, right? Yeah. Well, what do you got? Can you think of anything life moments? It is the very first time I went overseas, I went to play a festival in the UK back in 2012, and I landed, I didn't have a, uh, a smartphone, I still had like a regular dumb phone, you know, mm-hmm. and I, uh, but I did have an iPod, and I had directions to where I was going written down, because I couldn't yeah. like, I, I didn't know to ask, you know. to tour Big Mac? Sure, yeah. right, and I made it a point, The first, I got on the tube, and then I played London Calling. I was like, nice. I have to, I have to nice. play this. Uh, and you know, it was a little bit of a forced moment, but I was like, when else am I gonna? Oh, that's, <laughs> yeah, that's pretty awesome. Yeah, exactly. I remember yeah. when I was on the tube, I made it a point to like take a picture, like, the, and I was like, down on the tube station yeah. at midnight, because it was right. at midnight. I think we were coming back from seeing New Order yeah. at like Alexander Palace. Oh, when right. Red Boys used to tour in the late 90s, every time we uh, entered New York, uh, Marla would either put on Tropical Quest or Paul's Patrick. Sure, right. It's like, boom, it's just the right, right. thing to do it's yeah. as the... you're entering New York City. Yeah. What about you, James? We always used we well, on sing similar to that with Hal, uh, when I was on tour, we'd get into the van and we had, like, tapes. And I yeah. had, uh, all we had was um, ACDC Back in Black Love it, from yeah. the thrift store and, like, a couple others, like a Otis Redding or something, but it was like a very small selection they, of tapes. They go well together. Uh, and and it was, the joke was we'd always play Hell's Bells after we'd gas up, like yeah. at, at, the, at night, middle of the night, mm-hmm. gas up at a truck hit stop. The, hit the gas. And, uh, and we'd always queue up on the tape Hell's Bells, so it would have the like, bong. God, that's the best. Bong. Man, that is and, awesome. And you'd just drive off into the darkness of like Hell's Bells coming right. on. And, and it, was, it, was, it was a rule. Like, we had to do it every time we got right. stuff. So now right. every time you hear it, you're thinking so about So now like I hear about it, I think about, like, four in the morning at a truck stop. Yeah. yeah. Cold, you, you know tonight all of no us uh, are going to have trouble sleeping. And yeah. I'm going to be like, I wish I would have told you. Ah, yeah. Sent a story. Totally. Right. Like, you sure. know? I mean, all I talked yeah. about was something that made me think about, like, nature shows and yeah. sad animals. Uh, West, Western Motel was on tour in the West Coast, uh, and... Uh, so you talk about seven uh, burly dudes, and now uh, someone put on a Roy Orbison's greatest hits, and next thing you know, you realize like 11 minutes, 13 minutes, 17 minutes go by, and you don't hear like a word, no one talk, and then you just look around, and everyone's just crying. Just right, right. Yeah. 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 yeah, just. Man, thank you, Sean, so much, man. You were wonderful. Sure, yeah, thank this you. is and a lot of fun. Thank you, Matt, and thank you to the Earl, and everyone have a great show tonight. 
And again, yeah, please send in questions. Uh, we, thank we you, want the Chrome Castle for yeah, thank you guys. Yeah, so much. And, but and, and, and the sound check was great. And and the cum part. The cum yeah. part. Yeah, cum part. Yeah. Yeah. We're just plank. gonna call you the C parts. That's the, the C parts. parts. <laughs> the C parts is a great name. Uh, you guys are so awesome, and the show is awesome. I mean, we really we just want to keep it you know, things going and growing. And I'm Stone Roses. Thank you, Stone Thank Rose. you, Stone Roses. Thank you, Manchester. Awesome. Cheers, cool. guys.